Is there a danger that the countries in the European Union, such as right here in Germany, that they could soon be faced with, with political paralysis on the order of a Brexit? Well, to talk about Europe, I'm happy to welcome back to the day Metin Hagverdi. He is a member of the German Parliament, the Bundestag for the Social Democrats. He is a member of the Committee for EU Affairs. Correct me if I'm wrong here. And he's also a member of the Bundestag's USA North America group, a true transatlantic yeah. politician as well. It's, it's good to have you back on the show. I, I want to just start with the, the news that we're getting here, that there is this sign coming from Europe that there is a willingness to delay Brexit. Um, have you heard that? I mean, have you heard um, from you know, your sources here in Berlin that Germany is, is part of the contingent saying we're willing to give them more time. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for having me on the show again. Yeah, um, yeah sure. The question is, uh, what's our way to that, uh, to that uh, extension? And uh, it should be, as we've heard before, of many voices in Germany today and also in Brussels, um, it has to be a clear signal coming from London first. So we are not importing the, the conflict, the mm. polarization of Westminster into the European Union, but have a clear idea what what could be backed by a majority uh, in London, which is obviously at this point very, very difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know what will be acceptable to a majority in Parliament. Um, but if Theresa May, if she goes to Brussels and if she asks for an extension till 2020, and if she asks for this bifurcation, if you will, this, this distinction between services and, and manufacturing goods um, in the customs union, is that something that you could foresee Germany and the European Union saying yes to? Well, we've just heard in this discussion prior to this to our talk here, um, we don't want to repeat, I don't want to repeat the cherry picking argument and the discussions we had in the past two years. Uh, we are at a totally different stage at this point. And I understood the prime minister very clearly today after the vote that she wants to try to take this last chance till Monday to talk to other members of parliament and the opposition to make up a plan, to come up with a plan that could be, could be helped by a majority of, of, of the British Parliament, and then, and then afterwards, and then ask for extension of, of, the, of the 29th date. And do you think it's realistic to extend it to 2020? I mean, to go past the European Parliament elections, which are scheduled for May? Um, it depends. Um, it's, it's difficult to imagine till 2020, but it, I wouldn't set a fixed date once there is, which we don't have at this point, once there mm -hmm. is a majority in the British Parliament, which would be a totally new situation, right? We've seen this today. Yeah, of course. Um, and yesterday. Uh, so if, there, if she managed or other would manage in Parliament to get that majority, I think the European Union would be very generous because we want, we want to see a majority of any kind in the United Kingdom. But, but you're not afraid of there being, you know, this contagion we want, I want us to talk about. You're not uh, afraid that if, the, if Brexit has not started and we have these European Parliament elections, aren't you afraid that that is going to have an adverse effect on the, the elections? And it the has elections? an effect, but it's, it doesn't have to be necessarily adverse. It's obviously it has an effect and timing is everything, yes, right? right? So, but once there is a clear sign of a, of a solution which the United Kingdom can think of and its parliament, not mm -hmm. only its government, yeah. um, then I think it depends on how clear, how, how concrete this solution mm -hmm. is. And then you could, I think you can manage to have a timing on this one, whether it should be a longer one or a shorter one. I, two years sounds a little too long for me. Yeah. Um, two months sounds a lot better, mm -hmm. but I think it shouldn't be a formal border of, okay, let's say the European election, the European Parliament election, if there was a good deal, a good proposal with a good majority mm -hmm. in Westminster, I think we could manage that problem as well. Okay. We were struck um, by two moments, one from last evening in London and another one from last month in Washington. We were struck by what... Um, what was said to us about civility in politics and about mutual respect in politics. I want you to take a listen to what Theresa May said last night when she got the results, this crushing defeat for her Brexit deal in Parliament. First, we need to confirm whether this government still enjoys the confidence of the House. 
I believe that it does, but given the scale and importance of tonight's vote, it is right that others have the chance to test that question if they wish to do so. I can therefore confirm that if the official opposition table a confidence motion this evening in the form required by the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, the Government will make time to debate that motion tomorrow. All right. Now, consider that and listen to an exchange between the U.S. President and the leaders of the U.S. Congress last month as an attempt was made to avert what has now become the longest government shutdown in American history. You know something? You've said okay, it. Okay, you want to put that you on my You said it. I'll take it. Okay, okay, good. You know what I'll say? Yes. If we don't get what we want, one way or the other, whether it's through you, through a military, through anything you want to call, I will shut down the government. Okay, Fair absolutely. Enough. And we I am disagree. proud, and I'll we tell you disagree. what, I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. The last time you shut it down, it didn't work. I will take the mantle Good. of shutting down. And I'm going to shut it down for border security. But we security. believe you shouldn't okay. shut it down. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. You know, we were still talking about that. Can you imagine an exchange like that taking place in, in the chancellery or even in the, in the Bundestag? Well, President Trump is a populist. So he's populist by definition, by my definition, yes. by the definition which is so so dangerous to to liberal democracies. Is he's constantly attacking uh, attacking uh, institutions of, of of democracy. So in this case, he's attacking obviously blackmailing mm -hmm. uh, U.S. Congress. Um, and no, at this point, no. But we have to do our homework that it will not happen in the future. Well, you know, Russia is seen um, by many as having a hand in the emergence of, of Brexit and in the presidential election of 2016 in the U.S. Can the rest of Europe, can, can Germany protect itself? Uh, how vulnerable do you think Germany is, the democracy in Germany, um, when it comes to meddling from foreign powers? Open societies have advantages and disadvantages. Open liberal democracies are very strong because we are, everybody could say what he or she wants right. to. And as long as they're free. respectful to each other, right? As long as, and they're respectful to the law, right? Right. So, but, um, the disadvantage is that everybody can participate, um, and that's what's happening. So uh, obviously, there is influences from the outside, uh, outside Germany into in, into our last election uh, in public debate generally. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a lot of Russian stories uh, connected to that. Mm -hmm. But the question is not whether we can really protect ourselves. I would say the challenge is that we are strong enough in our own discourse, in our public discourse uh, culture. Um, which makes us to a democracy. So you don't you don't see then you don't see what's happening in, with Brexit or in the United States. You don't see that as a contagion that has to be kept out of but Europe to, or Germany. To get this 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 example of the of the bus driving through th through London and yeah. and telling people that I don't know two hundred seventy million uh, pound would be would be saved uh, for the healthcare system in, in Great Britain. Yeah, that's right. I think Brexit. we shouldn't. I wouldn't suggest to make a law. Uh, to prohibit people painting buses with numbers. Mm -hmm. I, I would support a move to say, well, there have to be strong, rational discourse in public, mm -hmm. and then people, that at the end, democracy will prevail, the better yeah. argument. Re yeah, just be reasonable. Yeah, it's something we don't hear very often. It's good to hear um, a politician say that for a change as well. Mr. Metin Hotverdi, a member of the German parliament, the Bundestag for the Social Democrats. Mr. Hotverdi, it's always good to have you on the show and have your insights.